Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the latest from Crypta, Shades of Sorrow, out August 4th on Napalm Records. This album has 13 tracks, 51 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full-length studio album. They are a Brazilian death metal band. As far as the design goes, this album didn't surprise me or shock me. It's intelligent in the way that it offers the experience to the listener. And they understood exactly what this record sound-wise was going to be, and having that in mind, they had to create a design that enhanced the experience of listening to the album. When you look at the opening track, at the intro, when you look at the outro, and when you look at the interlude, these are the three pillars of the design of this record. A record that has a clear side A and a clear side B, but both sides equally good and offering a very similar experience so it doesn't lose quality as it progresses and it's not like it's top loaded and then you have weaker songs at the end. Not the case, a very balanced record as far as the quality is concerned. But those three songs are super important and they have duality to them. The opening and the outro have the ability to start the record and end the record. But if you listen to this record on loop, there is a sense of merging those two and allowing the experience to be fluid, continuous and not interrupted. This adds that playability factor that allows you to listen to this record multiple times in sequence and never really feel like there's an opportunity for you to walk away from it. The interlude track works as an intermission and you need one. 13 songs, 51 minutes, it's a long album. So there is always that sense of taking a break, catching your breath as a listener, re-engaging yourself with the listening experience, allowing you to better digest the album all around, making those 51 minutes feel slightly shorter. So I really enjoyed the design, it's really crafty, it's really intelligent, and it adds great quality to the experience of the overall record. As far as the sound is concerned, this is an album that doesn't define itself by being just one thing. It's definitely a death metal record, but it's a death metal record that has old school elements and it has modern elements. I feel like the drums and bass have more of an old school approach in the mixing, in the production and in the overall sound experience. And then the guitars and vocals bring in more of a modern feel to this album. Talking first about the old school elements. The bass on this album really pops. Now at times it's quite jarring because it comes so far off the sound, it comes so far off of the linear motions of the songs that it becomes almost the only thing that you can focus on. It's not the case in every single track, but when it happens, it does take a little bit of time for the listener to adjust. The more you listen to the record, the less noticeable it will become, or perhaps you become more used to it, and it's easier to uh, mitigate that experience by everything else that it's happening and by the quality of the songs themselves. Same thing could be said about the drums, not that they stick out or that they're jarring. The drums on this album are consistently heavy and powerful and actually I really enjoy the experience that they offer. Super consistent in what they're giving to the songs and the bass line that they're creating for then the diversity of the guitars to come a little bit more in motion. It's just that some tracks don't allow the guitars to feel as rich. The sound feels a little bit more hollow, there is a little bit more rawness to it, and when you match that rawness of the drums with that more piercing sound of the bass, it feels very unpolished, it feels very raw, and that's where that old school approach comes into the end result, into the production behind it, and in how everything went into the mixing. So this is definitely one side of the equation as far as the overall sound is concerned. And that doesn't mean that that's gonna be consistent throughout the entire record, because it's not. In certain songs, they brought those elements a little bit more into the overall feel of the record, giving them a little bit more depth and taking away a little bit of that rawness that they have. But when you think about the album in the big picture, more consistently than not, that old school raw feel of those two specific elements really stands out throughout the entire record. Now on the other side you have the guitars. This to me is more a guitar driven album than their previous record because the guitars on this album are not just there to create heaviness. They're not just there to create thickness. I felt the guitars on this album were better all around. They had more room to breathe. Having that more raw approach, feel and sound and experience on the drums and bass allow the guitars to really have uh, room to stretch their wings. 
to be more melodic. This is definitely a more melodic sounding album than its predecessor, and the guitars definitely have an impact in that. The solos feel more explosive. The solos feel better connected with the design of the songs. The solos feel a little bit warmer. They have more room. They also expand the footprint of the tracks themselves. So everything surrounding the guitars on this album just feels better crafted, it just feels bigger, and it adds incredible quality to the overall album. I felt more often than not connecting with the guitar sound and seeing where these guitars were taking me while the other elements feeling more consistent, allowing me to have a, a sense of togetherness that didn't really break away from anything else that was happening on this album. So it's important to have the drums that give you that sense of home and then have the guitars going in slightly different directions. But the guitar sound is outstanding on this record. And I enjoy the fact that on one hand, you have them pairing up with the drums for that thick, heavy sound approach, brutality, if you will, super aggressive experience of Krypta, but at the same time being very melodic, very driven, very dark. There's a there's a lot of darkness on this album, more than it's in its predecessor, and I think a lot of that darkness comes from the melodic sound that the guitars are infusing song in and song out. It's a very different guitar sounding record from the perspective of where the predecessor left us, but it's an album that takes us into a much better uh, way of constructing songs that feel not as linear, not as straightforward, not as simple, but rather a little bit more layered with a lot more to digest and a lot more to offer, giving playability to not only the individual tracks, but giving playability to the overall album as a whole because you just don't feel like every song is about being as heavy and as brutal as possible. This album feels like it had a little bit more thought process, specifically coming from the guitar sound. Now, as far as the vocals is concerned, Fernanda is on point. I honestly felt like this is perhaps one of her best performances ever on record. She just felt free, she felt loose, her range was tremendous. She has a great impact on every single track, and as far as the production and mixing are concerned, they pushed her into the forefront, having more of a modern feel. She didn't sound raw, she didn't sound rugged as some elements within the sound. She was very well defined, leading the charges up front on every single track. And I really enjoy that because she's a great vocalist. You don't need to bury her in anything. You just need her to, to, to give her the space that she needs in order for not only the guitars, to flex their wings, but also her musically and vocally to do the same exact thing. So her performance on this album was definitely a standout moment of the record. A darker, more melodic album, but an album that didn't give away any of the heaviness of its predecessor, any of the brutality of its predecessor. They took everything that worked really well with their debut album and they just increased or changed or allow some elements that were there to be more noticeable on this album. That's all they did. They pushed some boundaries, they evolved some of their sounds, some of their approaches, but keeping the Crypto sound, that, that original sound that we got from their debut album, still present alive and well on this record. It's an evolution, but an evolution that's strictly connected through an umbilical cord to the origins of the band. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with Dark Clouds, vocally a great dynamic track, offering a lot of movement, making the overall experience feel a very engaging, is a very engaging track, both musically and vocally. But it's also a track that has a lot of heaviness. It's also very demolishing, both musically and vocally. The heaviness fits or perhaps comes from the drums first and foremost. That allows the experience to feel very big, very full, and then the guitars help that experience as well. Still allowing the bass to pop on this track, not allowing the drums to overpower it, but rather giving the drums this necessary room and space so that the bass can come in and also have a clear impact in the overall pattern of the design. The guitars, like I said, heavy, driven, and dark. That is the consistency that you're gonna get from start to end. The lead to the solo is phenomenal. And then the solo section is just epic. But you could say that about every single track on this album. I honestly feel like this is a death metal guitar clinic from start to end. And this track really emphasizes that through all the different momentums, through the verses, through the chorus, through the lead into the solo section. The solo section itself is just a very old school, energetic, complete song 
that has all the right ingredients. Next we have Stronghold. Uh, the opening of this track, the way the song starts off is very old school. It has that lead in into a solo, allowing the guitars to really take control, to really take the lead and have an immediate impact. And then you almost feel like then the song starts. You don't see a lot of bands doing this uh, nowadays. It's something that's more of an old school element, but for a record like this, you can throw this as many times as you want. It never really gets old. So I really like that approach for this track. A track that because of that bursting start, then becomes a little bit more methodic becomes heavy, methodic, moving slowly, but still moving. It infuses some melody. The guitars come in with some melody. At first, very underlying melody, but melody nevertheless, creating a sense of, of layers to where this song is going. And it almost feels like the more you add to the track, the slower the track moves. That's kind of the experience that you feel as you navigate through traditional death metal elements versus the more melodic death metal elements. Those melodic elements are a little bit more predominant in the chorus. The chorus feels a little bit more brighter, a little bit more modern, and the verses feel a little bit darker, a little bit heavier, a little bit more brutal, a little bit more old school. That's the dynamic of this track. Now, there are some melancholic melodic pockets throughout the entire existing of this song, but those pockets really emphasizes all the heaviness that exists around it. Another track with a great solo section. Last but definitely not least, Trial of Traitors. Great tempo. Uh, this is a song that just because it's heavy doesn't mean you have to move a little bit slower. You can go heavy and fast, and this track definitely goes heavy and fast. The guitars have this killer sound to them from the beginning all the way to the end, becoming easily the DNA of the, of the track. There is a, a melodic riff within this song that becomes the song. The song is built around it, and it's built from it and that is a really key characteristic because every time it almost feels like breadcrumbs you don't hear it all the time but when he comes in he's like yeah there it is it, it's it's reconnecting the overall design of the song it's bringing you back into the path you may have lost yourself a little bit within this track at times you may have wandered off path but when that riff comes in you're back in line you're back in the path you're, con you're continuing your journey so i really like that it, it's a very interesting element that allows itself to be surrounded by a very thick wall of heaviness and making that heaviness even more predominant but also allowing that heaviness to then have an impact on how more melodic that riff sounds it's super dynamic vocally the entire track there's a lot of movement vocally the range fernandez range is on display on this song she really works with it and she emphasizes key elements and key parts of the song just by changing her delivery and by changing her tonality and that gives also darkness to how this track comes about and then it's an overall great guitar sounding song i can say that about every track on this album outside of the uh, intro and the outro because it's keyboards but outside of that this is a guitar centric record but not just a guitar centric record a great guitar sounding record i love this album from that standpoint it's a very interesting record to me, it's a step in the right direction without necessarily disconnecting from where the band came from. Crypta, Shades of Sorrow, out August 4th on Napalm Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those getting back to you. Take care, guys.